Hi everyone, V here, and welcome back to Snoot Game. Now, slowly the plot thickens. The gig is up, at least with Nazar, because now he knows that we are dating his sister. Somehow, we didn't get beaten up too much, even though the shot into the lockers was not that pleasant, but at least now we know that Hank's diet consists mostly of Tendies and Nuggies, which is... Uh, well, I appreciate the standards. Let's see how things are going to evolve forward. April 1st. Fang and I have been together for a month now. And right now, I'm gonna win our prank war. She may have got me with that stupid kiss prank. How the hell she found a mousetrap that small, I'll never know. Wait, if Fang somehow managed to think a mousetrap into the beak... Okay, I actually respect that. That's... that sounds more dangerous and painful if that would backfire. But I got a special packy treat for her today. For once I can use my weebiness for the greater good. Hey, sweet tooth. Fang groans at the pet name. Honestly, that hurt me to say too. I considered using her mom's pet name, but after the last time, I didn't want to tempt her. Phase one complete. She's too distracted to check the box in my hand. Wanna play the hockey game? Oh, is those funny sticks covered with chocolate? These are actually pretty good. How do you play that? Well, I pulled one of these. Yep, that, that's it. I take one of the green sugary sticks from the box and I hold the plain end by my teeth. That's what you might see. Then you have to stick with your lips. And so I'm bad as much as you can without touching my face. I hope that I did the accent good. In fact, narrows her eyes in suspicion and cautiously moves her head towards mine. It's just chocolate. Okay, that's cute. She moves in and crunches down on the pocky stick centimeters from my face. Jackpot. Wait, is it one of those weird flavors? Because I know that most of the pocky that makes it outside of the uh, outside of Japan is usually regular flavors, but they have some weird shit like I don't. Let's see, her face contorts almost immediately and she spits it out on the floor. What the fuck is that? Where did you even get those? I barely contain my laugh as Fang downs the rest of her coffee to get the taste out of her mouth. Let's just say Stella gets all sorts of weird snacks from Japan. Is this like wasabi flavored Oki? Fucking score! Like wasabi Oki sticks. I mean, I enjoy wasabi myself, but mixed with chocolate? No, thank you, I'll pass. Fang looks ready to strangle me, but I still have one card left to play. Hey, I have amnesty for today, April Fool's payback for the mousetrap for the other day. She growls at that and jabs me in the shoulder, I guess I deserve that much. Before I can make my retort, an announcer comes in over the speakers. Oh, holy shit. When it's distorted, it sounds even worse. Alright, everyone, listen up. Next month will be what is possibly the highlight of your time here at Volcano High. Prom. That's right, I said it. Tomorrow we'll be selling fucking tickets to prom. So get those formal fucking outfits ready. This sounds really out of character for Spears. I don't think he ever dropped the F-bomb before. The PA system's ending chime pushes in a moment of complete silence. Then all at once the chatter starts. Oh man, oh man, I gotta ask him to go with... I even have a dress good enough for... Tickets are pretty expensive, I'll pass this. Everyone seems excited about the sudden news. 
Chrome, huh? I guess I wouldn't mind going if it's with Fang. What would she wear? Actually, scratch that. What would I wear? I can't afford a decent outfit. Maybe I'll mail home and ask Dad for his old suit. A couple of tickets are like a hundred bucks, too. I'm sure I could make it work if I needed to. Hey, Fang. Okay. Settle down, students. There will be plenty of time to scheme your night of debauchery later. Lovely. We still have the lesson to get through. Finish this and then chatter all you need. The class collectively throws their heads back to groan. Oh, fiddlesticks, it's only two pages of article physics. You have a spare railgun in your backpack? Professor Fentwood passes out the assignment and returns to his desk for a quick nap. Article physics isn't too hard and more tedious than anything. I should finish pretty quickly unless something comes up. And remind me, what's a quark again? Oh, right. Lab partners. About 15 minutes into the assignment, the two of us are just about done. We're making surprisingly good time. Um, have you said that the electrons hold negative charge, right? Yeah, yeah. Can't imagine when I'd be using this crap in real life. You never know, you might shrink one day. Yeah, you might stop pretending you're live streaming on you, Snoot. I feel personally called out. As far as you know, I might be giving you incorrect answers, you know. Uh-huh, sure. The teacher is making his rounds, checking on the students and gets to our desk. Hello, Anon, Fang. Are you two getting along well? Yes, Dr. Ferns was. Great to hear. You know, I'm real proud of you two. I remember that at the start of the year, you were actually out of, you were at each other's throats. Now look at you. I mean, in a way, it is a compliment. And the two of us cringe. Uh, yeah, thanks. At any rate, you need to understand the material, right? Oh yeah, I'm an iron five. I was just helping them with a few problems. Huh? And this is the moment where I am proud of Adam because he finally started using the correct pronouns. Like, I know that for a lot of people, might, this might sound like a small thing, but believe me, this actually makes a huge difference, especially when it's someone that you care about and someone that cares about you. Do you remember it this time? Good, good. Also, I wanna add a little bit that few remembered it this time. You have no idea how much easier it is to do online because you can always just check what you wrote and fix any mistakes. And as you've seen in my playthrough here, I keep making mistakes all the time. I catch myself doing this, I try to correct myself whenever I catch it, but still. I won't keep you any longer then. First what meanders to pester the next few students. Anyways, where were we? I turned back to Fang and her mischievous grin. What? Her grin only grows. What? What with the look? She shakes her head and covers her mouth. Uh, did I say something funny? Anna, you ignorant slut. What? Notice something about me? Anything at all? Why do you have feathers on your elbows anyway? You know, as dumb as it sounds, that's actually a good question. God, no, I'm not actually envy, Anna. Also, we're going this way now. Wait, oh, she. Oh. Still, why do you have feathers on your elbows? <laughs> Fang rolls her eyes and digs her feathered elbow into my side. Right, right, I get it. Just joking around. Shame if jokes suck. We chuckle together. So, like, I can say you're my girlfriend now. Fang blushes a little. You always could, dummy. The blood becomes contagious and I find myself looking back at the worksheet. Girlfriend. 
suddenly I feel feeling squeamish all over again. I have a small, let's say, guess as to why Fang dropped the NB thing, but I'm going to wait with saying this till a little bit later. Because maybe it's this close. I mean, we went on days before, but she's never straight up said she's my girlfriend. Now I'm on the spot. It only makes sense that I asked her to prom, right? Why am I getting so worked up again all of a sudden? This is ridiculous. I'm just going to ask. Hey, Fang, you... We're going to prom together, right? <laughs> One step ahead of you. Oh, yeah, totally. I was gonna ask if you wanted to go at all. Of course I do, but do you want to go? I mean, only with you. Yes or no, Gork? Yes. That wasn't so hard, was it? Like plucking feathers. She playfully elbows me again. I think I get the feathers on the elbow thing now because those things fucking dig in. Ow. Do you even have something to wear? I was going to ask my dad for his old clothes. You sure? I could ask Nasser for his old stuff. Tail and wings. Right, right. You know, at first I thought that I would say tacky colors or something like that, but I guess that's... Yeah, that, that's a legit issue. Might look a little bit weird with holes for tails and wings. What about you? Actually gonna wear a dress? I've got this sick looking dress shirt. Nah, shirts suck. Wings again? Wings again. At least I can wear a backless dress. I cut my chin, I tried to picture the dress. The heat creeping up my face tells Fang exactly what I'm thinking. I grin and nod approvingly. And earn a third elbow to my side. Wait, hold on. Do you still go by Fang at least? Why wouldn't I? Cool, just checking. Taking it one step at a time, you know? There's only about 10 minutes left of class. Are we gonna have enough time to finish the assignment? Shit, yeah, forgot. I flipped over the page to review the entire second half of the assignment. It's gonna be close though. Fang scoots a chair closer to me. No time to waste then, yeah? Letting the question between us, Fang and I were able to finish the assignment seconds before the bell. Somehow. Okay, I'm getting a little bit clearer image over here. I'm still talking about uh, Fang's identity. I think I know what's going on here. But once again, I'm going to wait until a little bit later. We walk through the hall together, at least until we have to split to our separate classes. Hey, wait. You did the word said a bit this time, right? I thought you said you were terrible at those. Can you believe me up to this point? I feel used. That's because I used you. I'll get you for... Ah, fine. There you are. A moment, please. It spins? We turn to see Principal Spears trailing behind us. Yes? Fang, I was planning on asking you during your next class, but since I found you here... I'm embarrassed to say, we're missing one event slot during prom. Scheduling error. And your teacher, Mr. Jingo, recommended you for your musical talents. I'm not asking you to make your decision right now, but if you consider helping out by performing a musical number or two, that would help monumentally. Oh... This can either go wonderfully, or this can backfire horribly. Let's let's hope that it uh, that it goes the right way. Oh, Fang's going to play for the school if Fang agrees to. Well, uh, sure. Yeah, I'd love to do some songs for prom. Fantastic news, Fang. When you can, please swing by the office. Also, whenever Spears smiles, it's like this, you know, approving fatherly grin, and I love this. Thank you, Principal Spears. I'll come after school today. Spears nods and heads off. 
shit, now I really need to get a good dress. I thought you had one. A party dress isn't a performance dress. It's like, you know what I mean. I guess. You didn't seem as excited as last time we got summer to play. And now, I mean, last time I had a whole band to play with. You sure it'll be alright playing solo? Oh, okay. So it wasn't a full band, it's solo performance. But it's even different. Probably. I also need to practice a lot more. You'll help me, right? Of course. As long as you don't meet me up on stage with you. I'm trying to keep the crowd from throwing things this time around, actually. Bite me. Speaking of, I'll see you at lunch, right? Yeah, of course. Fang picks me on the cheek and starts down the hall to her next class. I feel my lips spread into a grin. It's kind of weird to think of it, but I'm actually excited for prom. Man, I hope that suit has actually been, been to the cleaner. I don't want to disappoint. Every day after school, for the next few weeks, I would join Fang to help her practice. Some days we would go to her place, and other days her father was home early. Those days, Fang would politely ask Nazareth to drop her off at my place. The right to keep it from her dad stopped being necessary after the third time. The practice sessions themselves were long and arduous. Sessions would go on until either her dad kicked me out or sundown. Fang would play for hours on end, occasionally stopping to let me try to take a break. Despite my warnings, she'd play until her fingertips were red and raw. That doesn't sound healthy. I mean, eventually it does make the skin on your fingertips way harder, and I'm guessing that the same applies to scales. But still, this does not sound healthy. I decided it was time for a real break once I ran out of band-aids. My great idea was to take out the map of the city I'd had since I moved in and throw a dart at it to decide where to go for the day. There's lots of neat places in the city for days. The mall, the arcade, a local amusement park. And the dart landed in the ocean over the dock. I don't know, go for a swim? Bella from Fang told me she wasn't stepping anywhere near a tuna boat. The aquarium it is. Okay, that's also a very good choice. So here we are inside after paying admission. I suggest she wear some gloves just to protect her hands. I don't think she understood the second part because they were fingerless. The aquarium is a large marble building on the marina. The various exhibits sprawl out to make the place total shape from a bird's eye view. It's a nice place, but I still need to make this entertaining to Fang. She already looks bored. Looking through one of the map kiosks, I tried to make a mental plan for the trip. Uh, they got exhibits for the deep sea, the Gulf of Mexico, the dogfish, tropical reefs. They got the dogfish? Good to know that the dogfish still lives. Eeny, meeny, miny, really, sea turtles it is. I take Fang's hand and lead her through the lobby into the chamber labeled Sea Turtle Conservatory. Oh, come on, now I want to see the dogfish. Are you sure you want to spend the day here? If you wanted to go to the mall or something, oh my god. Okay, I'm guessing... Yeah, a little sea turtle swims out of hiding in a tank right in front of us. Those things are fucking adorable. The only thing more adorable than a tiny sea turtle is right here. Right on the screen. Immediately, Fang breaks free from my armor, presses against the glass. Oh, yeah, that's freaking adorable. Look at these cute little shits. I love them. Yeah, I see them. 
appear to detect and see a few more hatchlings pop out of the court grass. The hive becomes contagious and I find myself pressed against the glass as well. Please avoid touching the glass, it stresses the little guys out. Oh, sorry. Come on, Fang, there's more stuff to see. Mm, no. There's more here than just those baby turtles, you know. Doesn't matter. Is it going to stay here all day, then? Mm, yep. <laughs> the power of cute. What do you do for lunch? Bring me something from the cafe. Alright, here I am going up without you. Oh, look, a double octopus. Where is it? And a snap bags move from pressing her face against the turtle tank to pressing it against the octopus tank. Ma'am, please refrain from. <laughs> Fang's reactions are priceless. I just love that cute face. Oh my gosh, Adam, look at it! It's like a living egg yolk with button eyes. Is that the first analogy you can think of? And what's over there? Are those sea horses? Holy crap, I have to take a video of these. Oh, uh, this is freaking adorable. I shrug apologetically at the attendant who has given up entirely, but watching Fang zoom between the exhibits to gush over each oddly cute sea animal was just too much. Suddenly my phone finds its way into my jack pocket already set to record it. She'd probably kill me if she found out. But it would be a good death. Wait, where'd she go? Around the corner to see the next room has a large group of school children hovering over a stingray touch tank. Cool, stingrays are pretty awesome. And they are actually pretty docile too. That is, a large group of school children and Fang towering above the rest. She does have that act down though. Oh cool, a stingray pool. You plan on touching one? Touch? Yeah, you can put your hand in our little slide against the watch. I roll up the jacket sleeve and push my hand into the water, splaying it out. Fang and the children lean in intently. The water is cold, but sure enough, a few of the playful things make a run and slide up right against like a cat begging for scratches. See? Several in the crowd start jumping with excitement and put their own hands in the water to try for themselves. Fang doesn't seem completely convinced though. You sure they're right to just touch like that? Aren't they dangerous? I mean, only the tail, and only if you startle them. I mean, it's a bit slimy, but there's a hand sanitizer thing on the wall right there. That isn't what I meant. Come on, I'll make sure they don't bite. Fang reluctantly grabs my dry arm, and I leave her to a spot not occupied by ankle biters. I put my hand back in and motion for Fang to do the same. She hesitates with her hand raised just above the water's surface, then plunges her hand down next to mine. It doesn't take long for a few rays to make the corner and brush up against our hands. I don't know how to make that sound, okay, it's just... Squeak, okay. You alright? Yeah, no, it's just... You are right about them being slimy. Well, I have yet to hear of a dry fish. Shut up. After a few more rounds of race, Fang decides she's had enough. See, that wasn't terrible, right? Actually, you got all your fingers, right? I don't know, wanna check? Of course. A cheeky grin and raised middle finger confirm her hand's integrity. So, uh, which exhibit are we checking next? I checked the aquarium path to see where we haven't been yet. Well, if you go outside, we can see the dolphin pools, the way it moves back through the deep sea exhibits. With Fang and agreement, I lead her towards the exit marked with a large dolphin sign. I still want to see the dogfish. Upon exiting the building, my nose is assaulted by a mix of salty air and the smell of raw fish. Somehow it's even fishier than inside the aquarium. 
Ooh, smells like lunch. Uh, say they should be feeding the dolphins pretty soon. The walkway circles around large pool with several dolphins swimming around. I can make out the trainer holding a hoop with a bucket of fish by the feet. One of the dolphins jumps straight through the hoop and is rewarded with a fish caught out of the air. Would you jump through a hula hoop for me if I had treats? What? <laughs> I noticed the trainer has traded the hoop for a large brush and is, and is getting one of the dolphins to open his mouth. The trainer starts brushing the dolphin's teeth and showing them the rows of neatly spaced cones. I make a show of craning my neck down to get a view of Hank's teeth from below. She raises an eyebrow for a second and then realizes. <laughs> ah, cute. Another jumps onto my shoulder and her other hand covers her snoot. So that's how you brush your teeth. I don't need someone to bribe me at least. Well, if you ever need help, I'm sure I can get him to lend me one of those brushes. And that gets me a jab to the ribs this time. Oh, come on, you have to admit they look a bit like you. Ah, I don't see it. The dolphin decides her nods in agreement. Wait, what? Right then. So, how about we hit the last spot and then go grab our own lunch? Unless you want to have some tuna with your clone there. Oh. <laughs> the fang rolls her eyes at that. But yeah, it does look. Fang does strike you as the kind of person that actually likes these jokes. Her dolphin duplicate did too. <laughs> You're fucking with me, aren't you? What are you talking about? Fang's aquatic doppelganger makes a laugh like chipping and finally swims away. So, deep sea then. Better not give it too much thought. We'll leave the dolphin pen following signs back towards the building. The floor slopes slowly until we reach a drop label that's the sub level to our destination. Pushing through, we find ourselves in an oversized hamster tube beneath the water. No, I didn't realize they had one of these. From within the glass walkway, we're surrounded by a myriad of colorful marine life swimming around us. Hang's eyes are wide as he tries to follow the different schools of fish that dart and throw about. I'm more mesmerized by the world of filter light cascading off the fan, casting her in a gentle glow that illuminates her white feathers. God, I'm so glad I'm recording this. Recording what? Uh, mumbling. The, the shark. Yeah, that cool looking shark over there. I point to the shark that's currently lazing about, casually drifting by the walkway. Fang turns to gush at the shark, giving me the opportunity to quickly stop my phone and see that my battery is near dead and storage near full. Ah, there's the last exhibit. I hold up another seat of door, set of doors, the room within near pitch black. Is it closed? Hmm? The lights. Oh, nah, the room is dark because the things inside aren't used to light. Oh. Wait, are you scared? No, I just wasn't expecting it at all. I offer her my hand. Despite her, despite her claim otherwise, I can feel how tense she is by how her fingernails dig into my hand. I lead her into the darkened room. What a light there is coming from the various animals within. The aquariums within are packed with bioluminescent jellyfish illuminating the darkened room with an ethereal glow. That's actually... That's actually pretty awesome. Whoa, this is... beautiful. Yeah, that's... I wasn't referring to the exhibit. Hank's grip on my hand eases and her fingers work to intertwine with mine. With what little light there is, I can make out Hank's smile. My eyes have adjusted and now that I can see Fang's eyes locked out of mine, gossamer light making them glow. 
My lips press softly onto Fang's beak and in a chaste pack. Ah! We call Fang off guard. Oi! Give me a warning next time. Mmm, nah. I laugh even as her hip bumps me roughly. Our interlocked fingers prevent her from using her preferred elbow tactic. So, had fun? Mm, maybe. I'll say yes if you delete that recording. Oh, but you were so cute. Shut up! I'm sexy, damn it, not cute. You know that these two things are mutually exclusive. You can be both sexy and cute. Yeah, why not both? She glowers. Feel rested? A bit. I feel even more rested after some lunch, though. Sounds like a plan. The rest of our, the rest of our rest day was spent just relaxing on the pier. Snacks on the boardwalk, a bad sunburn on my neck, and a very relaxed girlfriend. Overall, mission successful. Except the sunburn. Ow. I mean, if you're pasty and old, then I guess that as soon as April comes over, leaving the house without uh, sunscreen is not exactly the best idea. Hmm. That's actually pretty interesting. Seems like it was a relatively short chapter or something like that, I don't know. Though I do not feel like wrapping everything up just yet. The episode has been only like uh, only a half hour long, but considering what's going on here and that's one month later, I feel like we will be going straight to the prom. So, you know what, instead of going forward with this, I am going to, let's say, spend a little bit of time uh, explaining my thoughts about, uh, about Fang's revert from non-binary to uh, regular cis, even if I don't like that word because, yeah, I just guess I've been online long enough for it to kind of rub off on me in the wrong way but okay i'm going to try and analyze this just a little bit mm. when we at first met fang well they went by they them non-binary and i feel like this kind of idea was in a way not even you know, pushed onto Fang by Trish, even though I feel like uh, she kind of dipped her fingers and her horns in this. But once again, I do not think that was done with malicious intent. If anything, the scene on the roof explains it to me a little bit more. It's like Fang desperate. I'm going, by the way, right now I'm going since Fang went from non binary to regular, I'm going to refer to Fang as she, from now on. Um, basically, after the scene on the roof, where Fang admitted that she could not find any friends for so long, despite doing everything that there was to do, and trying to pretend to be someone else, I feel like this was just the desperate need to belong, and in a way, she found herself welcomed in those circles. I don't know, maybe Trish knew a couple of other people and she suggested this for Fang just to, let's say, help her, uh, you could say, cope with the idea that, uh, uh, that she doesn't have that many friends. And Fang caught on to it somehow. At least that's uh, that's my guess. Once again, I do not think there is any malice with this if it came from Trish. Mm, if anything, Trish is just that kind of an overbearing friend, and she might have 
pushed it onto Fang, even with the best possible intentions. And considering that at that moment Fang was trying to figure out what the hell is going on through her life and who she is, because for some people that journey is actually pretty damn long and bumpy as hell, so it's not something that you figure out when you're a kid. Some people take ages, even their entire lives, to finally figure out who the hell they are, what are they capable of, and what they want to do in life. So it's never too late. So if you still haven't figured out, that's pretty okay. You still have time. Don't worry. The world isn't ending tomorrow. It's gonna be okay. But like I said, I believe that Fang caught onto it because in a way it was comfortable for her and not you know in an attention seeking way like some people would say but more like in a way you know what i don't see why not it will not hurt to try and maybe even for a longer time it uh, let's say it actually gave her comfort or a sense of closure if i could use those words, I believe that Fang genuinely felt that this was a good choice for her, that uh, it made her feel good enough to actually stick with it. And the events of the past few weeks and the past few episodes helped Fang rectify it. I mean, two episodes ago, Fang noticed how one of her closest friends, Trish, kind of like sabotaged us, us with uh, the presentation. And for Fang, that was a giant shock. I mean, all in all, she realized that one of her best friends was so jealous of the fact that Fang right now had a boyfriend that she was trying to do some dirty work just to put a wedge between Fang and Anon. And in a way, I guess it caused Fang to slowly reflect on some things. And she realized that maybe being non-binary wasn't exactly what she wanted. Maybe she rejected it because it came from Trish and she wanted to distance herself from this. This is also a possibility and I'm not going to deny that. But it might have just clicked in Fang's head like, uh, no, you know what? This was nice, it was a relatively enjoyable moment of my life, but it's not exactly what I want to do. And who, not exactly who I am, that's most important. And in all honesty, I understand this. I had a couple of non-binary friends which reverted back to factory settings, let's say, and a couple of Trans friends that eventually detransitioned because, in the end, they realized that it wasn't exactly what they wanted. There is nothing wrong with suddenly reverting back to what you were before just because you realized that it doesn't make you happy. But just like it's okay to suddenly realize that you are non binary, you are trans, or something like that, it's 100% okay to go back the same way. And if someone is saying otherwise, then they are fucking hypocrite. Because I am not going to I'm not going to yell or try to defend one point of view. No, if you dis if you decide that being N B trans, whatever, makes you happy, good. If you decide that nope, it was fun, but it's not exactly who I am, I do not feel this, you have every single right to go back and nobody has any right to give you shit for this. And I believe that this is what happened over here. I believe that after some thinking, maybe association with Trish and stuff like that, Fang just decided that nope, this is not what really brings me happiness. And I guess that's it. I know that today's episode is going to be a little bit shorter, even with my little bit of rambling and stuff like that. But like I said, I have a feeling that with this fast forward, we are going directly into the prom. And I do not want to stop that part dead 
in the middle. So I'm going to wrap everything up over here. So thanks for joining me for the episode and for staying through my rambling. That's all for today. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Have a great one.